that if you want to teach the subject of Islamic eschatology, where do you begin? And we began. Others can begin where they want, right? There will always be others who know the subject better than me. But I choose to begin with the visit of the angel Gabriel, Jibra'il alayhislam, just before the Prophet died, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And I have said that because Allah chose this moment to send him, send the, the angel to him in the form of a human being, this never happened before in history. Yes, the angel came, the angel came before Maryam, for example, in the form of a human being. You don't have to remind me, I know that, yes. This is the first time in history that we know of that the angel came in the form of a human being in front of everybody. And so this is a historic moment. Why did Allah do this? Why did he send him in this way with so much drama in such an unforgettable way? And secondly, why did he send him just before the Prophet died and after Allah had already sent down the revelation that my, the, the religion is now perfected and the job is now completed. And then why did he come into the masjid in this way, which is so full of drama? He, he is not a resident of the city of Yatrib. He is a foreigner. He is someone who comes from outside. And therefore his, his clothes and his body, his hair should be filled with dust. But he is spotlessly clean. Nothing of the desert is on him. Nothing. So he could not be a traveler, a Musafir. And he is also not a resident. So this is really, really mysterious. Did he drop out of the sky? Why is it that no one intervened to stop him when he was walking through the gathering and going directly in front of the Prophet Why this tremendously dangerous breach of security when all the companions are there, one of them should have gotten up and stopped him? And then why is it that he asks questions when he already knows the answers? It's mysterious to us. We are not accustomed to this kind of behavior. And then after the Prophet would answer the questions, then he would say, your answer is correct. Strange, isn't it? And then after the five questions and five answers, he got up and he left. As mysteriously and as dramatically as he had arrived. I... I'm answering the question for you. I am saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this in order to impress upon us forever and ever and ever the stunningly import the stunning importance of what was conveyed in this event. And it was Islamic eschatology. The first three questions are different for the third, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. The fourth and the fifth pertain to Akhiru Zaman, which is eschatology. And the first, second, and third are, are concerned with methodology for studying the subject of eschatology. That is what was conveyed to us in this event. And therefore, the subject of Islamic eschatology is one of tremendous importance and therefore we have really really paid the price for neglecting it all these years it's not being taught no our scholars don't speak on the subject the most important question in akhir zaman of course is without doubt the return of the son of mary nabi isa the prophet jesus his return is the pivotally important event of Akhir zaman far more important than anything else. There are those, of course, who will differ with me. Yes, I know your differences. I know your views. This is my view. That 
the return of Jesus, Nabi Isa is the most important event of all in Akhir Zaman. And then, of course, there is the prophecy of Nabi Muhammad that Allah will cause someone to impersonate Nabi Isa Islam. And he is known as Al Masih al Dajjal. And when he comes into the world, he comes to test us and to create fitna, that which would cause problems for us. And the fitna of Dajjal is the greatest, said the Prophet, the greatest fitna that mankind will experience from the time of Adam alayhi salam to the last day. And so the subject of Dajjal is of paramount importance. Good then. Now that we have, now that we have uh, identified that the subject of this event is Akhiru Zaman, Islamic eschatology, we can now turn to the five questions. Question one was tell me what is Islam? Question two, tell me what is Iman or faith? Question three, tell me what is Al-Ihsan? And we are accustomed to the use of the word Ihsan uh, as beautiful conduct, nice conduct, good conduct. And then question four, when will the last hour come? When will the last hour come? And question five, what are the signs of the last hour? And so you can see that questions four and five pertain to eschatology. Questions one, two, and three, however, pertain to methodology if you want to study eschatology. The Prophet Islam, answered question four. And he said, the one who is being questioned has no more knowledge than the one who is questioning. So next question, please. Hmm? Because only Allah knows when the last hour will be. Only Allah. The Quran clearly says it time and again, the knowledge of the last hour is only with Allah. When will the last hour take place? And so it is wrong to say, innahu wa innahu that he, Jesus, Nabi Isa Islam, he is the knowledge of the hour? How could that be when the knowledge of the hour is only with Allah? Clearly there is something wrong here. In fact, it's not. Rather, it is the word is the same, the Arab is what is different. And uh, this, this is the correct one. That he is the sign par excellence of the last hour. Meaning that he will return. And when he returns, that is the sign of all signs of Akhir Zaman. And so even the Bible says, only the Father knows the last hour. The Son does not know the last hour. This is the, the, the Torah, I mean, sorry, the Gospel, the Gospel of Jesus. It says, up to this day, it says, only the Father knows the last hour. The Son does not know the last hour. Yes, that's there in the Gospel to this day. And so this was question four. But even though only Allah knows the last hour, only Allah knows the last hour, yet Allah has given us signs of the last hour. And so now the angel asks, what are the signs of the last hour? Because Allah has provided us with information on that. He's given the information to Nabi Muhammad so tell that Jamaat, which repeats like a gramophone record, only Allah knows the future, only Allah knows the future, only Allah knows. 
tell that gramophone record that the angel then asked, what are the signs of the last day? And the Prophet Islam then gave two signs, and we had never heard them before. It's the first time, but the naked barefooted shepherds, the naked barefooted shepherds, meaning shepherds who are very poor, uh, they would be competing with each other in the construction of high-rise buildings. So a massive amount of wealth is going to come to very poor people. Hmm? Poor people yesterday and today filthy rich. But these shepherds will want to show how wealthy they are. And so they will compete with each other in building the tallest building of all. Hmm? This is a ma major sign, a major sign. And this has already taken place. You can see what the petrodollar has done. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, Arab oil producing countries who yesterday were really, really poor. We had to send zakat to them in Mecca from India. That's right. The Indian Muslims were sending zakat and sadaqah to Mecca for the people for the residents of Mecca and around Mecca. And today they are filthy rich. And now you see them <laughs> competing with each other. No, no, no. My building in Jeddah is the tallest one of all. No, no, no. My one in Dubai is going to be the tallest one of all, etc. This has already been fulfilled. But he, he gave a second one. And I don't have the time to analyze this one. He says, that a slave woman, a slave woman will give birth to her mistress and tell you the lama to Rabbataha that a slave woman will give birth to her mistress. I don't have the time, it's going to take me too much time. I have to go to the feminist revolution. I also have to go to the subject of riba to explain this one, so we're going to leave this. We don't have the time for it. Now, if you want to study Akhir Zaman, if you want to study Islamic eschatology, what is the way? What is the methodology? And the angel is giving us a methodology. And traditional Islamic scholarship has to wake up. That when it comes to Akhir Zaman, this is a new methodology. Number one, you begin with truth. You have to first accept the truth which is there which is called Islam, that there is but one God. And Abraham was his prophet, Nabi Ibrahim Islam. That Moses was his prophet, Nabi Musa Islam, etc. This is Islam. And now the last one has come, Nabi Muhammad Islam is his prophet. This is the last one. This is Islam. So Islam has been all, all the time it has been there, and now it has come to the world for the last time. And then that you should, uh, um, the, the declaration of faith. And then the question is asked, what is Iman? And the, the Prophet Islam gave the Iman, that Iman means that you must have faith. Faith in Allah, faith in the angels, faith in the last day, faith in the books, faith in the prophets and so on. But we already, are familiar with this and therefore if you want to study Islamic eschatology you must first have belief and then you must have faith without belief and faith a PhD from MIT isn't going to help you in studying Islamic eschatology but then the angel asked the third question which introduces us to Khidr al-Islam which introduces us to internal insight which takes us to Majma'ul Bahrain, the place where the two oceans meet. This is methodology for study of Islamic eschatology in the modern age. What is al ihsan And the Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, replied, and this is a reply, this is his reply. He said, and ta'abud Allah ka'anna katara. That 
that you should worship Allah, you should serve Allah as though you are seeing him. But uh, when Musa Islam, Moses went up the mountain and when he said to Allah, Allah Ta'ala, he said, Arini, anzurilek, show me yourself. I want to see you. What did Allah say? Can you see me? He said, Lantarani. Not possible, but possible. Much mumkin. <laughs> you cannot see me. Not with these eyes, Musa. You cannot see me. So, and you should worship Allah as though you were seeing him. When Allah says that you cannot see me, something is strong, strange here. But then the companions ask, O oh, Messenger of Allah, would we be able to see Allah on Judgment Day? Who is asking? The companions of the Prophet, not George Bush. Would we be able to see Allah on the last day? And then this is response. Do you have any difficulty in seeing the sun when it is midday? He said, no. He said, do you have any difficulty in seeing the moon when it is full moon? They said, no. He said, that is the way you will see your Lord on Judgment Day as clear and plain as the full moon. <laughs> but uh, if Allah says you can't see me, how can the Hadith say that you can see him? The Hadith is not talking about these eyes. So now we have to ask the question, do we have any other eyes besides these eyes? This is methodology for study of Islamic eschatology. And this is the methodology for studying in Akhir al-Zaman. This is what is missing in the Darul Room. Do we have any other eyes beside these eyes? The modern world says no, but the Quran says yes. Yes? أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ سُورَةُ الْحَجِّ Will they not travel to the earth? Perchance that by traveling the dead heart might come to life. فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ كُلُوبُ يَعْكِلُونَ بِهَا By traveling through the earth, the dead heart might come alive. أَوْ آذَانٌ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا Do they not have ears with which they can hear? فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَ الْأَبْصَارِ Truly, 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 says Allah. It's not these eyes which are blind. No. وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَ الْكُلُوبَ الَّتِي فِي السُّدُورِ What is blind is the heart which is inside the chest. The heart inside the chest can see, not the biological heart, the spiritual heart. We all of us have a biological being, a frame, and in addition to the biological being, the body, we also have a spiritual being. And that spiritual being has a heart. It's also called a kalb. And it is that heart which can see. And so in addition to these eyes, we have the eyes of the heart. And so when he said, in answer to the question, what is Ihsan? And he said, and ta'abud Allah ka'annaka tarah. That you should worship Allah as though you are seeing him. It's not seeing him with these eyes. It is seeing him with the heart. That knowledge comes to us from two different directions. That there is that knowledge which is externally acquired and for which you need, you need the senses, you need perception, and you need the rational faculty. But then there is that knowledge which is internally received. It is received through internal intuitive 
spiritual insight. And it is received by those who are blessed with the nur of Allah. And Allah says in the Quran, Yahdillahu li nuri may yasha. Allah grants that nur to whomsoever he wishes. So you do not fill in an application form and submit it for nur. No. You have to earn the nur and when you earn the nur then Allah will choose when to give the nur and who to give the nur to and the one who symbolizes in the Quran the one with nur in the Quran is Qidr alayhi salam we are taking you to an introduction to Islamic eschatology and we have shown you through this event of the visit of Gabriel, the angel Jibra'il, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents eschatology. And he does it in such a dramatic way. And he also delivers the methodology for the study of eschatology and so on. Until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.